So it's been a little while since I've watched a WWE show from beginning to end. I think several weeks back I tried to make it through an entire episode of Raw. I don't know why I chose that type of suffering, but I did nonetheless. Ah, but it's September. So hey, let's, let's give it a shot. Let's watch The Clash at the Castle. And I'm glad that they're doing an international pay-per-view. Need to do this at least once a year. You're trying to showcase that you're an international brand, that you're an international entertainment company. Um, you have sizable fan bases and pockets all throughout the world. Put that on display because you know the international crowds, in this case the Welsh crowd, you know, just UK in general, is going to have a greater appreciation than a lot of the American audiences for what they're seeing. So you're going to have better engagement and participation and interest demonstrated by the fans. And I loved it. Like that was one of the really good things about watching this show today. And the other key part of it was not just that energy, but the additional energy that I had because I was able to watch the show in the middle of the afternoon. To be able to watch a pay-per-view on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern, I loved it. Wish we could get more of this. Maybe an unpopular take, but it sure as hell isn't for me. Let our folks across the pond have what feels like a primetime pay-per-view for one of the few times for them. Give us a mid-afternoon show. It benefited everybody as far as I'm concerned. And I look at the show and it was solid. I enjoyed myself. Um, was not a spectacular piece of wrestling show, but I, I enjoyed myself and enjoyed my time. Uh, the six-woman tag that kicked off the show, though, it was okay. It was a little bit long for my taste and it was a bit sloppy and kind of choppy in its movement. But the cool thing about it was, is you have the damage control group with Bailey. They win. Bailey goes over Bianca. You're setting up future story. Like, not every match has to be a five star showcase to get the job done. This one gets the job done. It did what it needed to do. So that for me is cool. It really didn't matter because the next match was so great. And I've never been the hugest Walter or Gunther fan, um, but clearly Tapioca Tips he is no longer. Like he took better care of his body. Like he decided, hey, like I could really be something at this wrestling. So I'm going to act like it. I'm going to conduct myself like it. I'm going to get myself in a better freaking shape, and it shows. Um, but Gunther and Sheamus for the Intercontinental Championship was fantastic. An old school kind of physical brawl. This is the type of match that Gunther should be showcased in. This is the type of match that a Sheamus should be showcased in. I loved how they allowed the fight and the physicality and the stiffness of the fight to come through. And they weren't overly reliant on high spots. Didn't need a ton of them. Not called for here. If you don't need to, why go there? Didn't have a reliance on near falls and false finishes as too many of these lazy, sloppy-ass matches get in professional wrestling today. This is the type of wrestling that I enjoy. This is the type of wrestling that I love. This is the type of stuff that I don't want to see every single time. No, because just like anything else... You know, it gets to be too much of any one thing is a bad thing. But God damn, this match was outstanding. The crowd was really into it. I was really into it. Like, the only crying shame to me about this is that this wasn't a WrestleMania type match. Like, that's how good this match was. One of those undercard, mid-card matches that avoids a bunch of gimmicks and stipulations, that avoids a bunch of high spots, so it doesn't take the shine. It has its own unique feel and spot on the card, and it delivers in every freaking way. It was fantastic. Um, and maybe because it was so fantastic, the next match, the SmackDown Women's Championship, I just didn't care much about. I could tell the ladies tried, but I didn't care. I don't care about Shayna Baszler. I certainly don't care about Liv Morgan. I personally don't see what all the live love is for because I, I just got feeling it. And, you know, to be fair, it's probably not a character meant to appeal to me. Fine, whatever. But you know, you're going to put her on the show. Like, it, it's very obvious that Shayna had to slow down quite a bit in order to be able to work with Liv. Like I said, they tried. I'm not here to bury them. Um, but 
Liv Morgan wins. I, that didn't surprise me. I mean, she's going to beat Ronda Rousey. She's got to beat Shayna, right? Um, you beat the name brand version. You got to beat the great value version. But yeah, could have done without this match personally. Edge and Rey Mysterio versus Judgment Day. Woo! The crowd loved it. Had a lot of fun. So did I. I'd love to see Edge get one more run as a world champion. Let the young lion roar one last time. I'm just saying. All this talk beforehand about, is this when Dominic's going to turn? Is he finally going to turn? Now, I mean, personally, I would have loved to have seen Ray tra turn on Dominic. He's not his son anyways. I turn on him. Align with Edge. Become rated R as a tag team. R-E-Y-T-E-D-R. And go on some two-man power trip and dominate things. Show these young fools how big boy business is done. And that's exactly what happened in this match. You got two Hall of Famers, two legends in Edge and Rey Mysterio. There's not enough heat in the damn world that you could try and pretend is there to make me believe or feel that a freaking faction like Judgment Day, this mid-card faction all freaking day, should be beating Edge and Rey Mysterio. F that. Just because they're fresher faces or younger talent doesn't always mean they need to go over, and they clearly didn't hear. And it wasn't about them anyways, because the way this all played out, it needed to go down like this. Edge and Ray showing how big boy business is done, and then Dominic remembering, just like his haircut reminds him, that he's Eddie Guerrero's son, damn it! And he don't need Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio's trying to hold him down. Edge was just a casualty, a pawn that was used, in order to get revenge on Rey Mysterio. And this is big boy business here by Dominic. Don't just go after Rey Mysterio, go after Edge too. You're getting yourself two feuds with two legends, two Hall of Famers. Why wouldn't you? Like, that was great. It worked out. I mean, you could, you could feel the sense of betrayal and everything. The crowd was like, what is happening? What's going on here? <laughs> Excuse me. A lot of you felt like it was coming, and I certainly did too, but the way it was done was incredibly well done. So I got to give props there. I really, really enjoyed that match as well. Matt Riddle versus Seth Rollins. Here's what I'll say. You know you really, really, really have to be a grating, annoying, suck-ass pissant in order to get me to openly cheer for Seth Rollins. And that's exactly what... Bro, bro, bro. Would you say bro? I have no charisma, bro. Would you say bro? Now, I dare you tell the truth about my wife and my family, bro. Fucking Matt Riddle. Hell yeah, I was backing Seth Rollins all the way on this one. I don't care if his wife is the man in the relationship. Who gives a crap? The match was cool. I mean, I'm not a big... I think Riddle's overrated. I think some of his shit, especially his punches, look sloppy, but it works. Only thing that matters, though, is hashtag thank you, Seth. Seth gets a victory. Yes. Only because it comes at Riddle's expense. Yes, yes. That's what I'm here for. But certainly when all is said and done, like some of you will probably take to the comments and talk about the women's matches and what you think about them. Dominic's turn on Edge and Rey Mysterio, his alleged dad, not his real one. You'll be talking and rant, ranting and raving about how magnificently awesome the Intercontinental Championship match was with Gunther and Sheamus, as you should. Even him getting like the sympathy cheers from the crowd afterwards like even that was well done then we get to the undisputed championship match and i'm sure folks are going to have all types of ranging opinions on this one you can sense though that a lot of people were thinking this was time this was the time after 734 days the tribal chief the head of the table in god mode or not was going to go down at the hands of drew mcintyre oh amateurs you just don't know how big business is done but the suspense was there. You could feel the energy in the crowd. The crowd was engaged throughout. Like, it had a big fight feel. Even when I go back to, I keep bringing up Gunther and Sheamus because of how great it was. Like, even when you had the other four, like, doing crap at the very beginning. And you just had Sheamus and Gunther doing a face-off. Standing eye to eye and not moving, not doing every, anything as all these other clowns are doing their thing. Like, I love that. And I love the big fight feel here. I saw somebody tweet about how this felt like a takeover show. 
In some ways, it certainly felt like a Triple H takeover show. You've, you do have the, uh, we're going to show celebrities. We're going to show the Tyson Furies of the world. We're going to show the UFC midweight champ or whatever the fuck he was. I don't care. Um, we're going to sit there and show Adrian Street. Nice, nice acknowledgement of Adrian Street. Hell yeah. And then you're going to have a, a main event that has a big fight feel. And this certainly did. And I really, really, really enjoyed this match. And not just because Roman Reigns won, but that was the only logical conclusion here. Now, I thought when they were showing Karrion Cross, that it was going to be Karrion Cross that was going to get involved with this match. And to have it be the Usos' little brother that comes in and ultimately cost Drew was fantastic. Like, it was a nice swerve. It doesn't mean anything for Roman. The, oh, Roman can't win without help. It's not his fault. He can't control what rogue family members do. He's just sitting there minding his own business. It's all he's doing. Frickin' Drew probably threw Haggis in frickin' Roman's eyes at the beginning of the match, so he's clearly impaired. He still would have found a way to win, but the fact that it had you on your edge of your seats because you're thinking Roman might actually beat Drew, and then, oh my God, Drew's about to beat Roman, and then it doesn't happen. Like, that was a hashtag, LOL, Vince type of moment, because that's exactly what Vince would do. Vince would say, oh, we're here in the UK, Drew's going to have everybody behind him, or screw it, fuck that. I love it. But this is the right thing. Drew is going to be massively over with that crowd, whether he won or lost. So if you don't need to go there, don't. Personally, like I said, I would maybe have cross interfere. But now you've introduced a new member to the bloodline, a way to freshen it up. Roman still goes over, so he has he. And all of this is good. And frankly, when you look at the way this show finished, when you got Tyson Fury in there, the, the fucking shot he hit on Austin Theory when Theory was trying to come out to cash in, it was fantastic. Everybody could get down with that. Because if you have a Money in the Bank winner named Theory, what's next? Is tag team partners fucking hypothesis? That's stupid! So hell yeah, I was glad he knocked him the fuck out. But he's sitting there singing with Tyson Fury and talking about partying. This bell was supposed to mean so much to you. And now you're sitting there and you're acting like it doesn't matter. Why the hell should you get the title? Why should they have given him the title? Well, they're about making moments. They did make a moment. He was in the ring celebrating with Tyson Fury like he won even though he lost. Whatever. Bottom line is, is I enjoyed this show. Certainly things that I thought were meh. Nothing from my estimation, personally, that was terrible. Now, that could be because I haven't watched a ton of WWE over the past few months, so some of the stuff that might be more grating on me or more annoying just weren't this time uh, because it feels a little fresher to me, and that very well could be the case. But I liked it. It was a refreshing show for me.